to the Chase Ascendancy Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chase Ascendancy. I like how there was like a little delay, like you're waiting on your uh, your news anchor. Uh, very cool. So we're on episode yeah. 83. We are inching whatever, closer. Whatever's on the teleprompter. Oh, I'm sorry, this is 84, dog. Daggum. 84. 84. Episode 84. Sorry, I uh, crapped the bet on that one. We're on episode 84, uh, <laughs> but we are joined by a very, very special guest. Um, we have with us SE, also known as the Supreme Emperor, and uh, they are a contributor at Wikipedia. And here's the cool part. Because they are staying visually anonymous, we may be talking to an actual Wookiee. We don't know. You'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome on to the show. Um, thank you so much for carving out some time to chat with us this evening. Oh, thanks for having us. Uh, we've been having a blast making the rounds around the podcast, and we're always happy to talk about the site. Sweet. Perfect, perfect. Uh, so I guess um, before we like really dive into you know Star Wars lore and all that kind of stuff, I guess – my first curiosity would be um, how did how did the site come about and uh, do you run it yourself or how does how does that work like is it similar to other sites like that where multiple people can just go on there and whoever can contribute and it's your job to gatekeep make sure nobody's putting like ridiculousness on there like how does that how did it start and then how does I guess the how does it function? Oh, I suppose the easiest thing to do is, so the actual history behind the site, Wikipedia spun off from Wikipedia back in uh, 2005, and right. at the time, there was a lot of discussion on Wikipedia, but how in-depth should they go to cover you know, everything Star Wars? Do they cover just mm. the basics of the movies and characters? Do they go in-depth to that one character that just made an appearance in a single novel from like 20 years ago? You know, where do they draw the line? That led to them more or less having a vote to... Uh, limit it to the major, just kind of the main aspects of it, which turned into people deciding, okay, well, how, where can we put Star Wars stuff? How do we archive this since we can't do it here? Right. And that led to Wikipedia's founder, uh, Chad Barbary, who reached out to, uh, at the time it was called WikiCities, um, about creating a proper Star Wars site. This led to the creation of what was known at the time as the Star Wars Wiki. Oh, yeah, that does ring a bell, actually. That was in uh, March of 2005. Okay. So are, are you very, guys very still, cool. like, tied to and affiliated with Wikipedia, or are you kind of your own thing? No, so we're our own thing. Um, Wikipedia is hosted by Fandom, which was yeah. previously okay. known as Wikia, and then before that, yep. WikiCities. <clears throat> um they host something like a quarter million sites at this point, ranging from wow. pretty much every topic you can think of. If there's anything that you have watched, read, played, or anything recently, there's probably a wiki site for it. Yeah, I think Oof. there is a like. I even, remember there's the series Josiah and I read the Dwarves by Marcus Heights, and I think there's a fandom page for mm -hmm. that as well. And that's a very obscure series. <laughs> and the way it works is, um, like Wikipedia, anyone can edit Wikipedia. Um, we, of course, have our ground rules and our policies about how things should be laid out, how things should be sourced. But by and large, the main premise behind it is just be bold. Make a contribution. That's pretty, cool. pretty cool. So how does it work where um, yeah. if, like, let's say, uh, let's say someone goes in there and is on purpose just being a troll and putting a bunch of wrong information and just being silly or whatever – um, how do you all govern that? Like, how do you, how do you know? And then how quickly would you say the average issue like that gets resolved? Well, it's essentially, it would be reverted probably within about 10 seconds. Wow. And that's largely just because of the sheer number of incredible people that are uh, working on the site and the amount of people that watch what we call our recent changes feed, where we see everything that's been added to the oh, site. Oh, okay. And yeah. I'll actually, I'll drop that in the chat so that the three of you can see that. That's cool. So do you have people that like, or is it all volunteer hours for the people that watch the recently changed or is that all people on staff? No, it's everyone who works on sites a volunteer. We're all just doing this uh, wow, in our spare time. Wow, that's awesome. That is oh, awesome. Cool. So there's all I of guess, us have uh, all of us have all of us have jobs and uh, lives outside the site. <laughs> wow, 
That's pretty mm-hmm. impressive, though. It's a it's definitely a mountain of work to just do because you love the fandom. That's pretty awesome, though. Uh, so Wait, I guess so I would. Uh, so, go go ahead. Are you gonna? Okay, I was just curious if you like. If, I assume at some point you've made a contribution if um, you've been with the site for a while, but. Um, do you have anything that has been like your favorite little piece of info that you've gotten to share or something that you found from somebody else's contribution? Um, well, I found a lot of very, very interesting things. And the one that I have been sharing a lot on podcasts lately, and everyone has described this as cursed knowledge, <laughs> is this article here. And I'm going to share this in the chat here just so you can see it before I actually say what it is. I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> All right. Nine if you want, if you want me to, I can share it in the in the feed. Oh, if not. perfect. Yeah, yeah. That's that's cool with me. This right here to me, this is this is a good indication of just how in depth the site will go into this one off mention from a single non canon book from 1993. What? That's funny. I think wow. having looked at this, it reminds me of a uh, – did you watch Futurama ever? I personally haven't. Uh, there's a, an episode where one of the characters gets – he's a robot. He gets launched into space, and there's a, uh, a micro colony that takes place on his, uh, <laughs> on his body. I think that, <laughs> that might have been. Oh, my gosh. A shout out to this. The writers for Futurama are like all massive nerds. So it makes sense that this happened. That's hilarious. Wow, that's really cool. But to me, this is an example of, like I said, just how how will people on Wikipedia will dive into the most obscure source to find that one single mention just to make sure that it's covered on site. Yeah, that's really funny. Right. That's awesome. Yeah, and how many, think- uh, how many people did you say that y'all have com- contributing? Um, so on average, on a daily basis, um, and I'll see if I can actually just find the actual feed for it. But on an average day, probably upwards of fifty people contributing, and that would be okay. considered like on a daily, uh, on a daily or semi-daily basis. Um, yeah. Over the course of the month, a couple hundred. Wow, that's awesome. So there's so, constantly people just going at it. That's awesome. So how does it work with uh, so like? You guys put your feelers out recently on Twitter and Instagram and things like that saying, hey, we'd love to jump on podcasts. Uh, who, how many people, I guess, I know there's not staff because it's all volunteer, but who is behind the curtain of like able to post on behalf of Wikipedia, not on the site, but on social media and things like that? Is that limited to like a, a pretty tight circle? Yeah, so that one's limited to what we call our social media team, and okay. presently that is my, that's myself and a couple other site administrators, cool. um, and that kind of varies platform to platform. But for the most part, it's me at the moment. So I do our Twitter account. Um, I've been helping out with our Instagram account while the person who normally does that is busy with just real life stuff. Sure. Um, and I also do our our YouTube account. Nice. Wow. Sick. Cool. What kind of stuff do you uh, build for the YouTube? So for our YouTube account, we cover what we call status articles. Um, to give some backstory on that, on Wikipedia there is, I guess, four different levels of article status. There's featured, good, and comprehensive, which have undergone our complete peer review process to ensure that they are, for lack of a better term, complete. And then there's anything that's non-status, which means it has not undergone that review process. So what we do with our YouTube account is we do audio versions of those status articles, both as a way to get that content out into another environment and to help ensure that the site is more accessible to anyone who might have maybe say uh, some auditory or uh, reading comprehension issues. Sweet. Very cool. So um, do you have like a a favorite piece of content that's come out recently? Like uh, Josiah and I, and I I think Adam a little bit, I've been really big into the, uh, the high Republic uh, stuff that's been being released over, I guess the last year and a half. Is there I've been that you've loving like... the High Republic, but I am so far behind in it. Um, recently, <laughs> it's I've been a doing lot, a dude. reread of. I've been doing a reread recently of the uh, of Timothy Zahn's newest Thrawn novels. Mm. Oh, but I've really come to discover is that I don't 
All I've yeah. really come to discover, though, is I do not have enough time to actually stay caught up on everything I want to. Oh, my God. I know. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a struggle, man. It's, it's a commitment. Yeah. We actually, last episode that we had, most of us together, I don't think Adam was able to make it. We had uh, Mark Thompson uh, on the show, so we got to talk to him about um, his thought process behind how he interpreted Thrawn's character and all that kind of stuff. It's really interesting to talk to him about that. Yeah, it was awesome. Even though I wasn't here, I watched it and I loved it. Every every second of it, I loved it. I'm definitely gonna have to check that one out because I'm I'm a huge fan of his uh, of his audiobook work. Sweet. Yeah, he uh, he Super actually cool for the uh, the podcast intro. Uh, Samuel is very very musically inclined, uh, so he put together some of our favorite Star Wars pieces and uh, and really modulated them and things like that so they're not exactly the original but they're recognizable and then when the intro's done playing and i'll send you the link to when we post this but when the intro's done playing you'll hear this sexy sultry voice say welcome to the chess ascendancy and that's actually mark as thrawn we got him uh whenever you talk to Mark, he he's super willing to help with anything um but of course there's a lot of red tape through penguin and lucasfilm and stuff but both times that we've made you know reached out to him at all he's been super willing and it's really just been the weight obviously on the higher ups but we've really haven't run into any issues uh of that sort so it's been really cool to get to talk to other yeah. people like if you would have told me we started this podcast probably about two two and a half years ago coming up something like that and uh if you would have told me hey you're gonna talk to you know a wikipedia manager or mark thompson or you know this sort of things uh I wouldn't have believed you. So it's, it's pretty cool. I think that having the podcast has definitely um, given us some, some really interesting and fun opportunities. Um, it's honestly it's the same thing with Wikipedia. If you had told me, I started on the site, I started reading on the site probably around the mid 2000s around when the site launched, mm-hmm. but I didn't actually start actively contributing uh, on a regular day to day basis until about 2011. At the time, if okay. you had told me that this, this hobby that you do in your spare time just for fun as a way to de-stress it's going to turn into you getting to talk on podcasts, to uh, talk to so many amazing people on Twitter and social yeah. media, and meet some of you know the greatest people that you've ever, you'll ever work with. I would have said you were crazy. Yeah, yeah. for sure. That's awesome. So uh, I get that. I guess it's all a voluntary basis, right? For as far as most people that work on Wikipedia, um, what is it that like keeps you contributing? What is it that keeps you coming back? Um, that'll vary person to person, but I think by and large, it's just the incredible community around this. Mm-hmm. Um, like I was saying earlier, we have about 50 plus people who are contributing on a regular basis. Um, but it goes beyond just contributing to something that you like, uh, be it like a comic or a book or a movie. It goes beyond that. It goes into a, a larger community of just Star Wars fans, people who just love this franchise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that there's there's definitely a lot of opportunity for um, negativity within the Star Wars community, but I think that if you get past like you know the the angry trolls, uh, there's a lot of really great people in the community. Um, oh, know, absolutely! We, we just celebrated passing 150 uh, 150,000 views on our channel. And ironically, uh, the I've, we've been making more shorts and things lately to try to put you know more content more often. Uh, but the thing that has really stood out that has uh, pushed us to the next level has been, ironically, this short about uh, Supreme Leader Snoke and like who he is, who he was, how he came about, and things like that. It's really funny because it's gotten a ton of views, but there's a lot of people who are. Um, commenting like, man, the sequel shit suck. They should have flushed this guy down the toilet with Jar Jar. And just, it's funny though, because those people are still, they're still watching the video and their comment actually yeah. helps us get more yeah. views. So Absolutely. ultimately we're, we're still winning. See, my core yeah. philosophy behind um, everything to do with our social media is that it costs nothing to be kind to somebody. Absolutely. And if a, single, right. if a single comment from us, from like our official account, can make somebody smile and make their day a little bit better. It costs nothing to do that. Yeah, right. Because at the core of it, we're all we're all Star Wars fans, and that's all it takes to be a Star Wars fan is that you like something about Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I, I completely agree. 
I'm very naturally like I I wouldn't say that I'm confrontational, but if someone makes fun of something I like, it, I do become confrontational. So it's been very funny when uh, when someone says something negative, even on a video that I'm just giving facts. It's funny because it it feels like a personal attack, and I've just been putting thumbs up and uh, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> <laughs> as the reply because it's like even if you even if you hate it the like you said the comments and stuff like that it grows the people that uh that are seeing the video and there are people out there that will you know for every for every person that says this sucks i hate this the, the sequels don't exist for every 10 of those there's one thanks for this video and there's another you sound like robert downey jr or jack black so <laughs> I'll take the, I'll take the good with the bad. Yeah. Right. Um, absolutely. So I would ask this: um, having been a contributor and been a part of this web of um, Kudar Mubot's information, um, <laughs> would you say that? Uh, <laughs> would you say that every character that we see in comics and things has some, at least tiny, minute background? Are there characters out there that? they're just drawn in um, and they're just to fill the page. That's one that actually there has been a fair bit of debate over the years uh, about on site uh, and how in depth do we go into covering these characters that maybe just got drawn into the background of a cantina. Right. And I can confidently say that if they have had one line that was not, you know, like just like uh, saying, ah, they probably have some sort of, uh, background to them or even uh, a basic description of who they are what they look like right yeah because well. i think um i guess i have i have two instances i'm specifically thinking of and I'll, I'll run them past you um but in the book um it's uh geonosis and the outer rim worlds it's like a reference book from back in the day um, oh yeah i remember that one yeah whenever you're you get to indoor on page, it's like, uh, let me see if I can zoom in here. It's like page, I don't know, 200 something. I can't remember. But it's talking about indoor, and there's a Ewok that has a... Hey, babe, come blue, here. There's a blue outfit on. Um, Shame you're not muted. Um, there's a blue outfit on that looks more, I guess, civilized, I guess is the term I'm looking for. Um, but it's an Ewok Jedi, and I can't find any actual info on the character, but they're just there at the bottom of the page of this source book, and I didn't know if that, like, did that ever become anything, or is that just there to to spice up the page? Is this the one you're thinking of here? Um, are you putting it in the chat? Yeah, I just put that in the chat. Let me check. Bing bong. Yep, that's the guy. Or the, the Ewok. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. To the best of my knowledge, we've never gotten to anything more on that. Okay, okay. Um, okay, one more I'll run past you just because um, it's been in my mind because I did a short about this recently. Um, so in Republic number 50, uh, it's when you first are introduced to the um, – you're first introduced to the ARC Troopers – this is from the Dark Horse run back in the day. Um, whenever that's uh, whenever that's running, there it talks about the Separatists basically getting ready to take over Kamino, and there's a Bothan Jedi. Um, I think it's a Bothan. Bothans are so ambiguous as far as their appearance. <laughs> um, but in this, uh, let's see if I can find it, and I'll just put the. You guys can see me, correct? I'm not. I'm not blacked yeah. out. Okay. Um, uh, this I see, character I see here. Your camera is disabled. Oh really? Uh, that yeah. Might be my connection though. I got you blacked out too, but it's really? still recording. Okay. So. All right. Well, let me. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna text this in the group chat, and then if uh, Adam, if you want to put this on the screen, I guess. Yep. We'll do. Um. Yeah, my Wi-Fi has been really whack lately. I'm I'm pulling down like half a gig a second, but my upload is on. And we're turning the bed. Uh, okay, I just texted that in the group chat. Um, but 
uh, there's this Jedi that looks to be a Bothan, and as a huge fan, obviously, of Jedi, and as a huge fan of Bothans, I want to know more about this character, but I think it's just something that the artists were just like, here's something that's neat. Um, and I didn't know if there's anything more. If you if you type in Bothan Jedi to Google, it's just a lot of fan art, or you get a lot of Valentine Farfalla, who's obviously half Bothan, but... Um, I didn't know if uh, if this was a character. Did you get that one, Adam? Yep, I'm getting it now. I'm just Sorry for yelling in the mic. I'm super embarrassed. My uh, <laughs> my computer setting is to the this mic, and then the internet settings to the Mac itself. Uh, that's all good. Good. There you go. Yeah, there you go. That's Carol the one. Run. Let me just run a category intersection here of the Bothans. Because that looks like a Bothan to you guys, right? Yeah. Uh, it either looks like a Bothan or there's that scene in Dooku Jedi Lost, I think. Uh-huh. Um, or maybe it's... Uh, I think it might be... Uh, Dagummit. What's the name of that? Uh, Asajj Ventress and Quinlan Boss. Dark Disciple. Dark Disciple. There's a Jedi that's kind of described as a a blue dog looking kind of character. Um, I can't remember his name, but it could be one of those. Huh. I don't think I don't like there's the... anything on that one. I'm running a search for like Boston and Jedi. Yeah. But I... The only thing that would make me say it's not anything. a Bothan is the fact that he actually has a head of hair. Um, like, yeah. Which is atypical to Bothans. Yeah, that makes sense. He would just have fur. Yeah, let me look. Because you have Tagorians, which are also kind of feline looking, but but that same thing that you just said, Samuel. Like the obviously they have fur versus yeah, you know, a head of hair. Yeah, I mean we don't have to we don't have to stay on there for forever. I'll just we had an expert on the line, so I thought I'd ask. Oh, we have him noted as a Shastavanan. What the? Frick? Mm. Can you spell that for me? Here, I'll drop it in chat. Thing. Here we are. I've never used the chat before on this. Just nice. tearing Bro. it up. I've literally never used the chat except for uh, I'll share it. In. Interesting. Yeah, there's just having a nickname Wolfman for their lupine appearance. Really? I feel so fancy because I literally just Googled blue lupine Jedi. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. That, that makes that makes a uh, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. 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 Whew. Well, thank God that I got this information from you guys before I tweeted that. <laughs> is it a Bothan on Twitter to see if this was a Bothan? How embarrassing. So you can get totally roasted. <laughs> yeah, because we have a good relationship with that account right now because we did a whole video on him and he said, heck yeah. I would hate for that to be uh, for that to be uh, wasted. Uh, okay, so moving on, obviously, I mean, we're not here to just quiz you on your, on your knowledge, but... Uh, <laughs> For upcoming projects, things like Kenobi and or Mandalorian Season 3 and things like that, um, just as a Star Wars fan, what are you looking most forward to as far as shows? And is there anything, uh, something that we do a lot on this show is just really out there speculation as far as things that we don't necessarily expect to see, but if we were writing the show, something that we'd like to have in it. So uh, I guess my question would be, what what uh, media are you most looking forward to, whether that's a cartoon, a book, a comic, or whatever? And then what is something you're hoping to see in that series or book or whatever? So for me, I'm most excited for uh, Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi, which comes out later this week. Yeah, um, thank God. Not mm-hmm. just for the show itself, but um, this Friday I'm going to be flying down to L.A. for a fandom conference. Um, so there, I'm going to be group watching it with a group of people that I've been working with for like – a very long time, and we're, we're going to get together. We're going to have, like, a whole group party for it. Nice. And it's wow. going to be so much fun. Oh, heck yeah. That'd be a blast. So, um, I guess in L.A., it'll come out right at midnight? Um, I'm totally going to butcher the time zone, but I want to say that, yes, you might be right. That time zone, uh, the time difference is going to throw me off so much. Yeah, yeah. For So, we're, we're all central time. Um, we're all native Houstonians, and then Samuel recently moved to Oklahoma. So we're all in that central time area. So 
it's interesting because for us, it's 2 a.m. every time a new show comes out. Um, Sad. So, and it stinks because yeah. I should have thought ahead of time to, to get you to come down that weekend, Samuel, because you could have been here for Kenobi and uh, Grad Weekend. Wouldn't work. Yeah. I figured yeah. it would be tough, but it would have been worth a try. Yeah, um, I've got okay, a, so an event. Looking forward, obviously, uh, your supremeness to uh, Kenobi most. Is there anything in that show that you're, you know, even if it's completely unrealistic, that's our speciality to quote Obi-Wan himself. So what is it that if you were writing the show and they said, all right, Supreme, what do you want in the show? You get to pick anything, even if it's a flashback, if it's a whatever, what would it be? I want them to canonize the Star Wars Kenobi novel that was written by John Jackson Miller. Oh. Ooh, you want a little plug eye action, huh? Just yeah, Ooh. just because I just want to see Obi Wan learning how to not be a Jedi, how to just be a regular person. Yeah, and having to like fight fight his instinct to try and fix every injustice. Yeah, that's a fantastic novel. I'm excited to see them probably do a little bit of that. Um, I don't think we had the Inquisitors when that novel was written, so that's obviously no, going to be a little bit of a wrench in the works. But I think we're going to get to see a lot of that in the show. At least I'm hopeful for it. Yeah, I agree because I think, uh, you know, something that you've heard uh, Dave Filoni say a lot, and even um, Favreau said this, when they were um, – if you've gotten to watch the gallery on the Book of Boba Fett, I, I haven't gotten to – sit down and really watch it. I have it in the background on a few of occasions, but there at the beginning, uh, John Favreau, I think it is, talks about how um, there's this wealth of stories and lore and information, and it would be a shame not to use it. And it was so cool because when he says that, like Tales from Jabba's Palace was on the screen, and I was like, bro, if they're taking Tales of Jabba's <laughs> Palace off the shelf and using that, we're in good hands. And so... Yeah. The Kenobi novelization is is so uh, – it's such a fan favorite, and it just got re-released as a Legends Essential. So it shows that Disney and Lucasfilm and them value what's in those pages, so that would be really awesome. And I think that the I, – I would think everyone in the group right now would agree that the time is perfect for any additional Tuscan stuff that we want to put on screen. We've really yeah, been for, sure. for that, Absolutely. I would say. I think it'll also be cool to maybe get a glimpse of the Obi-Wan Kenobi that we saw in from a certain point of view, um, where he's in like a canteen on Tatooine and he goes in for like some water and sees like a hollow of Darth Vader for the first time and realizes that he didn't mm. kill Anakin. Yep. It'll be cool to see that if, I mean, if yeah. they decide to pull from it. I'm wondering yeah. if they will actually do like a proper duel of some sort between them, because in A New Hope, all he really says is, you know, this is a presence I've not felt since. Yeah, there's no clarification. We've yeah. always had it implied as, oh, well, that's Mustafar. Yeah. But it doesn't yeah. have to be. Right, right, right. And also, what's really interesting is, it's in my in my mind if Obi Wan's not used, obviously he's used the Force, but he's not fought using the Force to try to stay under the radar and things. He hasn't done something like that in coming up on 10 years. It is interesting that Vader in A New Hope says, when I left you, I was just a learner. Now I'm the master. But it, again, those words are so ambiguous and ambiguous in the sense that he could be saying, I was just a learner of the dark side. Now I'm a master of the dark mm -hmm. side. Like you could really twist those words to use pretty much anything. You know what would be wild? Exactly. And there's, there's just there's so many great directions they could go with this. Yeah. It would be really cool if his moment of like learning the hard way would be he gets so like mad at just seeing Obi Wan that he does attempt like Sith lightning. It would be cool if we saw him do it for just a split second, but that obviously like it messes up his suit or whatever. That would be pretty sick. Yeah, well and we've seen some um, some stills and media releases of Hayden Christensen training with the cape on so he can like augment his fighting style to be in the vader suit so we're definitely going to see him fighting to some degree it'd be cool to maybe get a glimpse of what's in the vader comments where uh he's in charge of like training the inquisitors so yeah i'm excited to yeah. get to get some of that because the best like peak vader we've ever gotten was at the end of rogue one um and i think we're going to get some more of that 
I, I think, really I think hope something so. that we I think something we are going to see in this is I think they're going to do something similar to the Book of Boba Fett, where it's it's going to be about Obi Wan Kenobi, but every episode mm-hmm. is not necessarily going to be focused on Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah. Well, because so much so of is... so much of Kenobi's story is Anakin. Yeah. So learning about one is learning about the other, really. Yeah, as long as For the sure. Mandalorian doesn't show up to steal two episodes, it'll be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay, can we, so, get, like, can we get a flashback to the three like major domo? That would be, just be fantastic. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Oh my you, God. Uh, so with Andor coming later this year, what would you say the percentage chance is we see a Bothan on screen for Andor? <laughs> this guy in Bothans. It depends. Are we going to completely redo the way that the Death Star plans were stolen again? Or are uh-huh. we going to stick to one story this time? Uh, <laughs> well, Hilarious. I guess uh, my question would be, Obviously, Andor <laughs> has to be a prequel to in Rogue One, and so hopefully we can just see something, some some spy work happening. I mean, one could argue that Bothans are in every scene of Star Wars, and you just can't see them. So <laughs> that dumb invisibility. You know what's so wild <laughs> is, and obviously, Supreme <laughs> Emperor, you may know better than me, but I don't think like I know they use their spy network, and they're like super famous for it. But I don't recall. I know that they're sneaky, but I don't know if they have something that actually makes them invisible, other than in the video games for Battlefront Two. I was just gonna bring up Battlefront Two, the OG one. Two thousand five. Yeah. It's the only one I play, actually. <laughs> Dude, it's if still one of the greatest like a, games ever made. If they Love just it. made a huge, like, not just a remaster, but just like added on additional maps and characters, mm-hmm. but the gameplay was just exactly the same it would, if I think you, it would just be amazing since just you bought uh, an xbox one recently so that you could play lego star wars um yeah if you download battlefront 2 onto it you get all the dlc from the original battlefront so what? you have like uh asaz ventress is a playable character and you get kit fisto and you oh, have like yeah. all the extra See, maps. I forgot that they had fisto with no in. shirt yeah boy oh my yep. God. All right, well, I'll not be sleeping tonight. <laughs> yeah, so you can play on, like, Bespin. You can play in the Jedi Temple uh, on Yavin... F- well, I guess it's not a Jedi Temple, but there's the, the Temple area in Yavin 4 that's, like, only a small part of the Yavin 4 map, but it's, like, a, an extra one. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, like, that little arena or something, right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so uh, let me ask you this. Is there a... Um, do you... I know that there's a lot of stuff always coming out, especially nowadays, but are you a fan of the comics and the books as well? And if so, is there a line um, that's going on right now or a novel past or present that really stands out as your favorite, your go-to um, Star Wars read? Uh, my go-to one is always going to be Heir to the Empire by Timothy Zahn. That was the okay, one that uh, really got me into this. That's the one that got me started in this universe. So, Between the Heir to the Empire trilogy and the Jedi Academy trilogy, that's that's always been kind of my two that are at the core of where my journey began. Mm-hmm. Is there um, that is being there said? Ongoing... I always that be, that going that being said, I always have a massive pile of things of Star Wars books to read just sitting next to my bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Is there is there a uh, is there an ongoing comic line right now that is your favorite? Like. Every Wednesday stuff comes out and you keep up with things, but is there a line that you look forward to more than the others? Uh, it's going to be weird because I'm saying – the one I'm saying is one I haven't actually read yet. Uh-huh. I'm going to go with Afra. Okay. And you haven't started – Because I, I absolutely – yeah, so I'm so far behind with it. But I just – I love the way that uh, Star Wars Twitter just absolutely freaks out every time a new Afra uh, comic comes out. Because Alyssa Wong has just done such a great job with that character. Mm-hmm. I think there's a pretty good chance we may end up seeing her on screen at some point, whether in animation or live action. Yeah. She actually I does see have, her um, making an appearance with uh, Andor. Funny enough, so it's not necessarily Afra, but Alyssa Wong herself actually does have a character in another comic done by DJ Older, I think it was. Oh, really? It was... Uh, Hmm. Because I know in the uh, 
he helps with a lot of the High Republic stuff, but I know in the High Republic Adventures, one of the artists drew... I know he writes uh, that that series as well, and one of the artists drew a character in, just a background character, who looked just like uh, Daniel Jose Older. So that was cool to just see. It was like, he's the writer, but just as an added, just something from the side, the animators put a character that looked like him just in the mess hall somewhere. That's fine. Uh, here's here's the one, Alice on why it was put in by uh, was put in by DJ Older. Okay. As a tuckerization of her name. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this I guess this is from uh Iron Folk Adventures. <laughs> oh, Crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was really important mm. in uh uh was it Midnight Fall, Horizon? Fallen Star? No, yeah, Midnight Horizons. I still haven't finished that one. I've been trudging through it. I know. I'm so far behind. Um, very cool. Well, uh, obviously, we want to make sure we're honorable of your, your time and things like that. And I know that you've probably been getting podcast requests out the wazoo. So um, before <laughs> we go, um, let us let me ask you this. This is something we kind of ask everybody that we have on the show. Obviously, our podcast is called The Chiss Ascendancy. So we're huge Thrawn fans. Um, so let me ask you this, is there, um, what's your prediction for when we see Thrawn? It's kind of a three part question. Who would you like to see play, uh, the Grand Admiral? And then finally, based on, obviously you said you've been rehashing the Ascendancy trilogy based on how Zahn wrote him in there. Do you think that he's really going to be the big, bad Thanos type character of the Mandoverse? Or do you think that? Um, there will be another threat that, that comes into the picture and Thrawn will end up joining people like Ahsoka. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him not necessarily being the big bad enemy because he's he's never really been that big bad enemy. He's always had a logical reason for why he does everything he does. Right. Um, and it's not necessarily always for that, you know, evil, uh, that, you know, that evil plot. So I think it would be cool to see him up here in, uh, and I'm guessing it's going to be in Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. I think we'll get a lot of little hints here and there, but I think Ahsoka is where we're actually going to see him. Mm-hmm. Um, but we already know that him and Ezra are off in the unknown regions now. So this would be a great t- a great way for them to bring in maybe the uh, Yuuzhan Vong or some new continuity version of the Yuuzhan Vong, that uh, extra galactic think- invader. I think they might be bring in the Grisks because that was. Kind I wouldn't of a be big, surprised if they went with the Grisks. Yeah, big left on red kind of uh, threat out <laughs> there in the, you know, the newer Thrawn trilogy that isn't the prequel series. That is so true. Uh, I would I would love to see him just working side by side with the uh, with the New Republic with you know all the OG heroes. Yeah, I agree. I think that uh, it would be really cool, as awesome as it was to read him playing mental chess with Luke and Leia and those guys. It, we've already gotten that story, so it would be even cooler to see. In a sense, I know that Air of the Empire is technically Legends now, but I, I like that we can still go and listen to and read those books. It would be cool to see what it looked like where... I don't know if there's really a force out there that could contend with Thrawn and Luke Skywalker, you know, standing side by side against any any foe. Jeez. I think no. that would be very cool. Absolutely. Right. Um, okay. So before we before we go, last question: What actor would you cast to play Thrawn? That's one I've I've I've, I've intentionally avoided thinking about that one because <laughs> okay. I want to be pleasantly surprised with it. Right. Okay. Fair when we go into a live action Thrawn, I want to go in completely blind with that, with no preconceptions about how I personally want them to be. Right. Right. Okay. Interesting. Well, Supreme Emperor, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Um, if you are a Star Wars fan, doubtless you have already been on Wikipedia zillions of times. That's where I spend most of my time uh, when I'm trying to get content for uh, for the podcast. If if I have a question or if I'm not quite sure. It's always been an amazing source. So uh, thank you and the team over at Wikipedia so, so much for, uh, man, enriching uh, the Star Wars community. Absolutely. And like you said, um, with information and kind words. (laughs) 
So uh, thank you so much, and we appreciate uh, you coming on with us. Well, thank you for having us. It's always uh, always a pleasure. Thanks All again. Right. Thank you guys so much. May the force be with you, and remember. The only family you have here is me. Ah. <laughs> Go ahead, Samuel. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> did it did blank it. out? Oh, oh I did, did it blank out? Yeah, I blanked out. Okay, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You didn't see anything. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. May the force be with you, and remember... The only family you have here is me. <laughs> all right, Let's we'll go. see you guys next time. Thank you all.